morning, good afternoon, and a very good evening to you. We're going to be tube, hope you're feeling grand and all is well in your world. Hello there, everybody. Uh, today, we are going to talk about the John Fushanti Wawa technique. Uh, more specifically, the more specifically, uh, we're going to talk about like, that crazy, crazy, fast, super shred John Frusciante guitar technique. Um, kind of like, you know, the example, the best example is the end of the Danny California guitar solo, where uh, he kicks on the wah wah pedal. It's all of a sudden a lot of white noise and a lot of kind of noise, and it's a really intense, fast, shreddy guitar part. So I'm going to talk about that today and how to do that uh, in as much detail as I humanly can. Okay, okay, it's an awesome technique, and it really adds massive intensity to guitar solos. Really, in it's a real intense thing to do like you know uh, uh you can kind of do it with certain wah pedals without doing this but it's never never a hundred percent so i'm going to show you today how to get that sound and also show you the technique on the guitar of uh, what you play uh while you're doing it, and also show you a close-up of the wah when i do it so you can see what the wah is doing because me trying to explain what how the wah goes is just pointless i can't do it so i'll just show you the wah when i do it and hopefully through uh, being able to see it you'll uh, be able to take it away and, and learn it okay so further ado let's talk firstly about the most important part of this technique the most important part of this technique is pedal placement okay this is really really key to this sound okay so let me show you how I've got things set up. Let me talk. Let me talk you through my signal chain quickly, and I'll try and remember to do it the right way because I always do it the wrong way. I always start with the amp, not the guitar, but that's the way it works for me. So I'm going to try and start with the guitar and try and remember that, but I will get confused, and that's just the way it's going to have to be. I'm afraid. I'm sorry, but because um, I'm an idiot and I'm backwards. Uh, okay. So um, so yeah. So let me let me talk, let's, let's talk about pedal placement because I say because it is this is this is of utmost importance. I can't stress this pedal placement it's importance enough to get this sound uh, down. Even before the technique uh, of how what John actually plays on the guitar, this is mega, mega, mega important to, uh, to have your pedals set up in this way. Okay, so let me show you. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so from the guitar... The first pedal you, uh, you want to hit from your guitar is something like a Boss DS2. You can use other pedals. You can use fuzz pedals. Uh, you can use other distortion pedals. But, 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 this is a big but. You can it. Nothing quite sounds like the DS2. The DS2 is the is that sound. If you know what I mean, it really is that sound. So DS2 is my recommendation for the John sound. It, it, in all fairness, like, you know, you don't need many pedals to sound like John, but the DS2 and the Ibanez Wah are, are kind of like... Well, I would say the DS2 is more important than the Ibanez, if I'm being perfectly honest. I reckon this is the most important pedal for when you want to sound like John Frusciante uh, over the Ibanez Wah, because you can simulate this thing uh, with other Wah Wah pedals, uh, like a Vox or something. You can simulate what this thing does. Okay, so, back to the thing. Uh, signal chain. From the guitar, first thing you want to be hitting is a DS2 or a distortion pedal, right? And that distortion pedal wants to be very cranked up. I mean, uh, you can see, I don't know if you'll be able to see, that's my settings there. So everything's on 10 and we're set to the turbo mode here. So that's kind of a normal mode and that's the turbo mode. So everything's flat out, okay? So, guitar, DS2 or fuzz pedal or whatever you want to use on this side, but like I say, the DS2 is the best for this sound. From the output of the DS2, then we want to be going to the wah wah pedal. It's really important. That that that's the key. That's the key right there. So guitar, DS2, wah wah pedal, and then out from the wah wah pedal to whatever else you want to use. Uh, I've got. Uh, let me t let me tell you my signal chain. So guitar, DS2, Ibanez wah. Tone City Golden Plexi, Marshall Governor 2 Plus, Line 6 Delay Modeler, Zoom G 2.1U, to Marshall MG, which we're using today. Okay, so that's my signal chain. So just one more time. DS2, uh, sorry, Guitar, DS2, Ibanez Wah, Golden Plexi, Marshall Governor, Line 6 Delay Modeler, Zoom, Marshall! Okay, that placement is paramount. That is, you won't... 
you can kind of fluff it without this placement. You can kind of get away with it, but it's never going to be 100% right. You can you can get close to that kind of intense wah sound, but you don't get the white noise part of it. Okay, so that is the key. Okay, even before you play anything on guitar, your pedals need to be set up that way. Okay, and um, the distortion pedal wants to be maxed out to a point where really um, it wants to be when you need it. You turn it on. As soon as you don't need it, you turn it off because it does that. And if your guitar's on, it'll just do this. Okay? So you want as much gain and distortion out of your lead solo pedal as much as you can. Because the thing about John's lead playing, when he kicks on a distortion, is John doesn't stop. He has this lovely flow to his solos. He doesn't kind of like do that staccato -y blues guitar soloing. Once that pedal's on, he flows with it. He goes with it because he can't stop playing because he'll just immediately feed back. And especially the volumes that John used to play at, um, the feedback would be uncontrolled, but it'd just be a bit crazy. So once that pedal's on for your solos, you know... Um, don't, you can't turn it, you can't stop playing until you turn it off, okay? So, on when you need it, off as soon as you don't want it. Okay, and then think, think of the Ibanez Wah, or any Wah for the matter. In all fairness, you can, like I say, you can get around the Ibanez Wah. Um, it has to be there. So, guitar, DS2, Ibanez Wah, out to whatever you want. Okay, and another thing to touch on really quickly, as I get a lot of comments on this. These two pedals are divas. They do not like clean okay so if your signal's really clean these pedals will rebel and they will not work you'll get volume jumps they'll be overly harsh and aggressive and nasty sounding and thin they'll just sound like rubbish so you need to give them what they want which is a semi-distorted signal and the weird thing about this is sometimes when you first start doing it you'll probably think my clean tone is way too, that, that's way too distorted. Sometimes it can be, depending on the amp you're using. Um, but John's clean tone is a lot more distorted than you think. And uh, it's, a, it's a really strange, it's a really strange thing, but it just takes a bit of playing around with, basically. It just, it, you just got to spend time with your, amp, with your amp and your pedals and just really dial it in and just kind of like, you know, just, just mess around until it works, basically. Okay, so... There we go. Okay, so that's paramount to this sound, is the way these pedals are set up, okay? Uh, without the DS2 and just using the Ibanez Wah, you can get that kind of pseudo-clean, crazy John Wah, but we're, we're talking about the full-blown shred Wah, which you need the DS2, well, you need distortion for. Um, but I might touch on that one at the end, the, the, other, the other technique. Uh, okay, so, paramount. Pedals this way around. Guitar. DS2, Ibanez Wah, out to whatever else you want. Okay, so now, um, let me let me show you the um, the technique on guitar of what you do, and then uh, then what we'll do is we'll put it into practice, and I'll I'll, I'll, I'll show you uh, how to manipulate the Wah to do what it needs to do. So say, so let me show you now. Uh, let me go pick up a guitar and show you what you've got to play in order to get that kind of crazy shred, super fast John thing. Okie dokie, so the lick we need to learn, uh, well, the, well, I'm going to show you three today, actually. I'm going to show you three little licks that John does. But the main Dan and California one we're going to do is this one. Okay, that one. And I'm going to show you this one as well. Which is kind of the same thing. And then there's also this one. On their own, they sound really cool, and they're just, like, wicked staples of rock guitar since time immemoria, if you will. Ha <laughs> um, Okay, so, we're going to do it in D minor, okay? So, this is coming out of D minor pentatonic scale. So, this is D... Excuse me. D minor pentatonic scale, John's favourite key, D minor, by the, by the looks of it. There's a lot of songs in D minor. And all fairness, I can't blame him, because D minor is gorgeous to solo, and it's really a, some, a very melodic key. Okay, so D minor pentatonic scale... Okay, 
And we're going to basically, this is, called, this is called a trill. Okay, and what we're going to do is basically playing free ish kind of notes. And I call, I say free ish because we're technically bending the G string up. So we're going to start by bending up the G string, a, to, uh, a semitone. So, oh no, sorry, a tone. Uh, so the G string bends up a tone. Okay, so. And then uh, you don't release it, you just bend it up. And then you go to the 10th fret on your B string. And then you go to the 13th fret on your B string. And then you play it and then pull off. Okay? So bending up the G string, 12th fret, a tone. Uh, 10th fret on the B. 13th fret B. Pull off and then back to the bend up. Okay? So that that's that's the notes we want. Okay, so that's the kind of start of this, so to say. So, John actually does it um, with his little finger. John actually bends up the G string with uh, these two fingers, leaves his first finger where it is, bends up the G string with these two fingers, and then he uses his little finger to do the hammer on pull off. Like that. That's how John plays it. I, I personally don't like that. It feels weird to me. So I use just these three fingers. And bend up that. Uh, bend up the G string with my uh, middle finger, and then use my ring finger to do the the, the hammer on pull off. And basically, this finger, the first finger, never moves. It always just stays where it is on that tenth fret. And that's kind of that's kind of like your anchor point, really. And um, oh, and also, don't worry about the open the G string being open. Okay, so you don't have to kill the G string with your first finger because there's a trick to this in a minute, which that's going to add to the white noise of the wah-wah sound. So, this is the technique. Okay, so... Okay, so there's no point. Don't focus on this hand for the time being. Just do that. Just get that down. Because then, what we're going to move on to is basically strumming this. And this is where the intensity of this wah-wah sound comes from. Uh, if you were to do it like that, with the with the Ibanez wah and the distortion, it'd sound kind of intense, but it's not really. So if I just show you that really quick. So kicking on the DS2 and the Ibanez wah and doing that little uh, trill. <laughs> That is too clean. That's too clean for the John thing. So, what we want to be doing, and I'm just going to move the camera down a smidgen more so you can see my right hand, because I've just realised you can't. Da -da -da -da. Okay, so what we want to be doing is basically strumming the bejesus out of your guitar here. I never ever used that word in my life. I don't know why I just said it. So, basically, this technique... <laughs> But instead of picking individual strings, um, it's best if you can kind of get your thumb over top, but it's not... It's not kind of like paramount, because if you're careful, you, you, can, you only have to strum these bottom uh, three strings. But um, you want to be kind of getting open string noise. In, in, in much much the same way as kind of like Can't Stop, with where, where it goes... Where you're strumming all the strings, but you're only getting that one note, and where you're hitting all the other strings, and all the other strings are making it fatter. It's the same kind of technique. Ooh, I hope this is making sense. Um, so, so from that, we want to be doing this now. And almost the messier the better, in a way, because that messiness adds the white noise. And as I say you'll hear it more when I kick on the DS2. If you're doing this trill without the DS2 and you're just doing a clean one, it's best to kind of like be more accurate and just pick the, the G and the B strings like this. You know, because it's just a lot cleaner than just like strumming aimlessly. But kicking in on the DS2 and strumming all the open strings, well, not all the open strings, but muted strings as much as you can, um, neck pickup as well, please, Dave, uh, on the neck pickup, which is where you get the intensity from. It's not really the bridge pickup, but neck pickup's more intense. Um, that gives you the white noise and that adds the intensity. So, it does this. Okay, 
So the strings I'm hitting there are the D, G, B and E strings. And my thumb is muting the E and the A, okay? So my thumb's killing the E and the A, but I'm actually hitting all the other strings. And you can, if I, if I do it really slow, you can hear the D and the G strings actually ringing out. You get that, you get that fourth sound. And because I'm hitting the high E muted, that's adding noise as well. So on its own, it sounds pretty horrific and, no and messy. But kicking on the DS2 and the Ibanez Wah. You know, all, all of a sudden it becomes John Frusciante. So, uh, like I was saying, um, if you're not using distortion and you want to do a cleaner trill, it's best just to strum as best you can on the G and the B string, so it sounds like that. Oh, volume down. And but then you'll get the like the open the G string will ring out open, but that's okay. But as soon as you kick on that DS2, hit the D, G, B, and high E. And it just that that's what's that's what adds the intensity is the D and the G kind of ringing out, and also the high E being muted. It all those all that strumming and just being really aggressive with it. That's what's giving it that kind of like. John sound. That's what. That's that's another, that's another kind of key to his thing. He's just like strumming, and you got to be fairly heavy-handed but light, if you know what I mean. It, it, I find this is really hard to do if you've got a really stiff plectrum. I use um. Well, I use either point fifty or point sixty. I'm using a point sixty uh, today, but um. This is quite hard to do with a with a, with a very with a stiff plectrum. It doesn't really. You, you need the plectrum to give, really. Um, much in the same way as if you're kind of doing that Van Halen kind of uh, tremolo picking thing. Y your plectrum needs to have a bit of give in it, really. It it's kind of like really important for your plectrum to give. If it's not giving, then it can kind of get a bit kind of clunky and it, it won't flow so much. So, um, but I'm sure, you know, I'm sure you can uh, do it with a, with, a, with, a, with a big, you know, a, a thicker plectrum. But uh, I would recommend going for a thin one if you want, because John used 0.60 all the time, and and uh, you can see why when you start delving into his technique of um, of of why, because you can really dig into the guitar, but you're not putting. If if I I think if John was to use really heavy plectrums, I think he would just be constantly breaking strings, because he's because he's really heavy. His right hand is super super heavy, and especially on stuff like this. I mean, if I just do it. Uh, without the amp, this is just on, no, no, basically unplugged, if you will. You can hear how hard you actually hit the guitar. You know, and it sounds messy and horrific, but like I say, as soon as you kick on these... You know, it, 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 it all adds to the noise. Like I say, if you're going to do it clean, you know, be a bit more precise with your right hand, but if you're just going for that kind of crazy down California freak out while thing then uh you know it all 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 will be well okay so i'm going to reposition the camera again because i keep moving around and um where do i need to be now there we go <laughs> okay uh another thing of note if you will is um when kind of doing that kind of crazy fast thing um i'm pretty sure john does this uh as well is i tend to anchor my little finger on the scratch plate basically right where the middle pickup screw is there that's kind of like, I kind of tend to anchor my hand. It's like a pivot point, almost. That's kind of like where, um, that's where I kind of tend to anchor. And that, that gives me a bit more kind of like, instead of just kind of going, which you can do as well. I think if you kind of anchor in, it just, your hand can only go a certain distance. And it, and it also makes you, you're also able to play faster because you're not doing these kind of like wide sweeps, so to say. So you can kind of, you know that kind of thing okay so um so that's it so that's that's basically it if you will so that lick strummed with as much noise as you can make okay 
So, and then the same the same thing goes for the other, the other uh, two little trills. So the other trill is you're bending up the 13th fret on the B. Okay? 13th fret on the B, bending up a tone to uh, the D note. Uh, bend up that. And then you go to your 10th fret on the high E. And then same thing again. So you go bend up the 13th fret B, 10th fret high E. And then you go to the 13th fret on the high E. And then pull off back to the 10th fret high E. Yeah, on its own, it, again, it's a staple of rock guitar forever. But uh, with the DS2, it becomes John Fashanti. <laughs> Without the DS2, it becomes John Fashanti. <laughs> so it's really cool. And then you can kind of combine these two. So you can combine... <laughs> ...with this. For extra added intensity. And again, strumming. <laughs> Okay, so that's that one, and then there's the last one, which uh, which I really love is uh, this one, which again is a staple of rock guitar forever, but. As soon as, but John's got his own little slant on it with way uh, with what he does with his paddles. Okay, so what you're doing is bending up a 15th fret on high E. So you're bending it up, 15th fret high E, and then you release the bend, and then you go to a 13th fret high E, uh, 15th fret on the B, and and back to the 13th fret on the high E. And then when you kick these pedals on, it just sounds glorious. So it's just incredibly good fun, and they're just like staples of John's guitar solo since Californication era. You know, you can hear him doing them kind of things all the time, especially that one. <laughs> Uh, another thing you can do, uh, another uh, one that's just another one that's come to mind is the is the well, I'd like call it the baby crying noise. It's not a cry baby noise, but it's definitely a baby crying noise. It's basically what you're doing. It's like a double stop. So you put your two fingers. Uh, you want your middle finger on the twelfth fret on the G, and your ring finger on the thirteenth fret on the B. And what you're doing is you're bending up the G string, but leaving the B string where it is. So like that. <laughs> And then by manipulating the wah wah with the DS2 on, you get this kind of crazy noise. And I say, when you do it, combine it with the others. You know, you can do that, that kind of thing. Okay, so, um, and there's also another technique I want to show you really quickly that's come to mind. So, uh, lick one is lick two, lick three, and then another one, which sounds quite boring about the wah And then the other one I want to teach is this one, which is super super cool and very and it's something that John would do during the Stadium Arcadium era a lot. <laughs> to do the Gary Moore hand for this one. So basically what you're doing is you're, you've got a bit of a stretch going on here. So first fingers on the 10th fret on the high E. You're, um, you can kind of, I suppose you can kind of do it with your little finger. I kind of not, because I'm not, I don't really, you know, me and my little finger have a little bit of a dispute sometimes. So we don't really get on that well, but, um, but we are friends. But, um, so first finger on the 10th fret on the high E, um, you can have your middle finger or your ring finger on the 13th fret on the high E, and then your little finger wants to be stretching, or your ring finger wants to be stretching up to the 15th fret on the high E. So. Okay. And we're going to be starting out on the 15th fret note. And we're basically going to be tremolo picking the high E. Like that. So it's just one string we're hitting now. So this is all like a one string trill. Um. And that's what we're doing. So we're pulling off 
from the 15th to the 13th, and then from the 13th to the 10th. So really slow, it's basically... And I say, when you add the, uh, the DS2 and the Ibanez wah in, it just sounds really cool. And you can kind of speed it up and slow it down depending on how you feel. So you can go, you can start really fast and then slow it down like this. Uh, uh, really fast to start with, Dave, and then slow it down. Let's get it right, shall we? Or you can start really slow and speed it up. So that's another one that John does quite a lot. That's, that's more stadium arcadium era. John, though, he doesn't really do that much during Californication, oh, by the way. That's more, um, that's a lot, that, you know, that's like 2006, 2007 kind of era, John. So uh, just to recap, so um, strumming D, G, B, and E strings at all times during the... Uh, and uh, when you go to this one... It kind of wants to be all the strings again. Same, same thing again. I'm still hitting the D string, the open D string, when I'm doing that one on a high E. Uh, the only time I'm not hitting the open strings is on that one. Uh, well, actually, I'll tell you, I'm hitting the open G string every now and again, but I'm not hitting the open D string on that one. So on this one... D, uh, D, G, B, E on this one, same thing again. D, G, B, E on this one is just G, B, and high E. And then this one, that's just your high E. And then on that one, you kind of want to be hitting all the strings in a kind of like a raking kind of fashion, but like muting all the strings. So you can kind of get away with kind of like, if you can't put your thumb over top, you can kind of like use your first finger as a mute or, or just be kind of like quite precise and just hit your G and your B like that um so and then you can add them all together you can do kind of crazy things with them all together then so kicking on everything and we'll just we'll just go through them one by one <laughs> So that's basically kind of like that's there's that's a lot of John kind of things, and that, and that's basically what he's doing to get that kind of like super fast shreddy thing. Um, there's a lot of excess noise, but that all adds to it. Like I say, if John's not using Ibanez Wah in, in like say an intro jam, um, he's invariably on the bridge pickup. If he's not using sorry, if he's not using the DS2, he's invariably on the bridge pickup doing stuff like that. <laughs> Because it just makes it a bit easier. But as soon as you've got distortion on, the net pickup is the most intense. Without distortion, bridge pickup is in really intense. With, with distortion, net pickup's the best. And uh, the net pickup is normally where you'll find him 80%, maybe 75, 80% of the time when doing that kind of shred thing. Uh, the other rest of the time, he'll be on the bridge pickup. Okay, so... Um, so yeah, so that's it. So now what I want to do is I'm going to go through the things again and I'm going to basically put the camera on the wah-wah pedal so you, so you can see the wah-wah pedal and you'll get to see my amazing socks. Um, <laughs> so you can see how I'm manipulating the wah to, um, to make these noises. So you've seen uh, how what I'm doing on the fretboard and how, I'm, how what I'm playing and how I'm playing it. So it's a lot of strumming. Like I said, a lot of noise. A lot of that. A lot of kind of like because like I say, when you when you do it without the open strings, it's too clean. It sounds really good, and it sounds like John, but it's too clean. That... That's too clean. As soon as you add those open strings, it just becomes me like mega intense. <laughs> So just bear that in mind. So, and again, 
it's quite nice to anchor your fingers, really, because you get a bit more kind of like, uh, it's a nice kind of like, you know, pivot, so to say, for your, for your right hand. Okay, so um, let me move the camera down to the wah, wah pedal and show you a couple of different ways how to manipulate the wah, -wah so, um, so you can go away and practice it. I, I can't explain what's going on, so I thought it'd just be easier just to show you exactly what I'm doing. And there's, there's a couple of different couple of different kind of techniques that you can, you can kind of kind of do. So, uh, so yeah, so let me move the camera and see if I can find a decent enough angle so you can kind of see it. And um, yeah, let's go from there. Okay, uh, check out my purple socks. Okay, well, purple tipped socks. Okay, so uh, I'm just gonna basically play and try and do as many kind of little um, manipulations of the wah wah as much as I can. So if you're playing clean, and you're not using the DS2. And this is kind of like what John would do. So um, it kind of looked like this. You know, there's kind of a lot of movement, but sometimes it doesn't go forward all the way. Then sometimes it doesn't go back all the way. So um, bear that in mind. It's not just kind of going like, um, you know, sometimes you are. You know, that, that's toe down all the way. Sometimes you don't get to that. On the kind of shreddy thing you kind of do, but like, just bear in mind, sometimes you don't have to push the wah pedal all the way forward to get that sound. Just kind of like a little bit is really cool and not coming all the way back as well is cool as well. So just, you don't have to use the whole sweep, just use bits of it every now and again. Okay, so, um, net pickup, that was all bridge pickup. This is net pickup now and basically, uh, I'm just gonna basically play those shreddy kind of licks um, in all sorts of different ways and you'll be able to see what my foot's doing on the wah wah pedal and be able to hear what's going on hopefully and, uh, and uh, yeah, and then t take that away. <laughs> Okay, so that's basically it. And one of the things that I've, I, 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 I did there that I actually failed to mention is going the other way on the wah wah pedal. Everyone goes back to front, so all the way back to all the way forward, but going the other way, which is really, really weird and feels strange, sounds awesome. <laughs> Especially on that kind of crazy, kind of like um, crying baby noise. Yeah, so bear that in mind as well. And again, like I say, don't you don't have to use all the sweep. So you don't have to go all the way forward. You don't have to go all the way back. You can kind of like linger some, somewhere in the middle. And uh, John will sometimes literally leave a wah wah in one place and just manipulate it slightly like like, like this. So we'll start off with that. And then just start leaving it in the mid. Okay, so, um, yeah, is there anything else I need to mention? I don't think there is. So yeah, so, uh, let's do a recap. So, yeah, so that's that, let's do a recap. Oh, okie dokie, okay, so, um, so yeah, that's it, basically. There's, there's a couple of little fundamental things that make this technique 
work. And I say, the, the most important one, I think, really is the pedal placement. You know, you really need to go from the guitar to the distortion to the wah pedal. Uh, because, I will show you why, um, if you have... If you go from your guitar to your wah pedal to your distortion pedals, you don't get that intense white noise wah. This is what you get. <laughs> Which sounds cool and it's kind of, you know, you said, well, yeah, it's pretty close. It's pretty close. Yeah, it is. But I had to be on the bridge pickup for that to work. If I do it on the neck pickup, all of a sudden it's not there. It kind of is. It kind of is, but not really. It's not mega intense. Whereas, kicking on the, well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll go from, I'll, I'll do them back to back. So this is uh, guitar, wah, distortion. Okay. Okay, and that was on bridge pickup. Now this is guitar distortion. Wah. It's just infinitely more intense. So you can kind of hear from, from this. You get this. So, so you can hear that is really key to that sound as it, it all of a sudden you know it kind of goes from Brian Robertson of Finn Lizzy to John Fashanti. You know that this this being kind of like a Brian Robertson. <laughs> You know, from that kind of Brian Robertson thing to the John Shanty thing. So, yeah, that is really, really key. So, guitar to your main distortion, and I say, like I say, crank that main distortion so it sings. You don't want this. You don't want it to be kind of like. <laughs> You don't want it to be mild distortion, you want it to be absolutely... You want the amp to be hissing at you, so when you turn it on, it does the Kurt Cobain thing. And immediately feeds back. Because that's the way you create that flow that John's got. You don't create that flow by having low gain, you create that flow by having loads of gain and not being able to stop. Because if you do kind of like staccato -y, bluesy solos with the DS2 like that, this is what you get. It's just loads of extraneous noise going on behind it, which you don't want, um, and doesn't sound particularly good. So as soon as that pedal's on, you have to go with it, you have to flow with it, and it has to kind of like, um, you turn it on when you need it, as soon as you don't want it, turn it off. to quiet again and back to so yeah so that's let's say pedal placement is paramount to this sound you need it to be guitar to the distortion maxed out as much as you can learn to learn to love feedback learn to control feedback don't be scared of it um, so when you kick on that DS2 and or any distortion pedal you got, when it starts doing that, 
don't worry about it. Especially with loud volumes, it can become a bit daunting to kind of have that much kind of feedback happening. But just learn to control it. It's don't be afraid of it. You know, it's not gonna. You know, it's not. It's a glorious thing. It's an awesome thing. Feedback. It's great, and uh, should be used more often, in my opinion. Um, and especially for kind of like when you can't when you start doing stuff like John would. There's a solo of John in um, in Japan in in. Uh, when would it be? I think it's like 88, 89. He's got his red hair and he's he just lets the DS2 feed back. He does that kind of like... <laughs> you know, that's something he would do all the time and he mainly uses that kind of... that kind of crying baby kind of double stop for that kind of thing. You can kind of... Do what you want uh, with that. It just sounds glorious. And I say just manipulating the tremolo arm as well just tempts the feedback out a little bit more. It's much in the same way it's for Jimi Hendrix thing when Jimmy would tap the headstock to kind of like manipulate feedback. You know, you can kind of get that kind of thing going when you put distortion on. It's really, really cool. But that's a Jimi Hendrix lesson that's coming soon, everybody. Yes. I won't be teaching songs, but I'm going to be teaching Jimmy techniques, and I'm going to be teaching John techniques. They can't copyright techniques, surely. But saying that, they copyright a chord progression and a chord. What's next? My face? You can't use your face, Dave. It's copyrighted. Okay. Okay, so, um... Where are we? Um, maybe I should copyright my face. No, that's just horrific. Not, what what self-respecting copyright law would actually want to copyright that? Anyway, Shrek, maybe. Um, moving along. Um, so yeah, that's really important of tangent. But uh, guitar to distortion to wah pedal and then out to other things. Like I say, I use the golden plexi from Tone City for my clean tone. <laughs> Otherwise, it's just this. Really clean and the Ibanez and the uh, DS2 hate it. They jump, so you get this. And then you get this. But sticking on the golden plexi makes them behave. <laughs> Which I just when when I, when, I, when that happened, I was just like so happy. So um so yeah, that's what I'm using. But you can use an amp, you can use other pedals as well. I still think the best pedal for the John Tone is the Marshall Jackhammer, but I really love the Golden Plexi as well. But I but I might change soon back to the Jackhammer. There's something about the Jackhammer, I don't know, I don't know. But the Golden Plexi is here for the time being. Okay, so um. But the, the, the jackhammer seems to give you, it seems to respond better to the DS2. I mean, the, the golden plexi responds to the DS2 really, really nicely as well. But uh, the, the jackhammer more, it, it, I don't know. They both give it what it wants, but I don't know. There's something in the jackhammer. Let's just leave it at that. Okay, so yeah, so that's Paramount, pedal placement. Uh, the other thing I could say is strumming uh, the, the lick. Don't, don't just, don't pick them. Don't do that, it's... With the D, G, B, and high E strings, you know, kind of like, but the high E's muted, but the D and the G strings are open, you can hear them <laughs> boing in out. Um, I swear, so apart from that, that one. Um, and I say, just manipulate the wah in how you fit, and it, wah pedal playing, you don't, I don't ever feel you want to be doing this with a wah. <laughs> Using all the sweep all the time, you be it, it, the wah pedal is a really expressive, expressive pedal. Jimi Hendrix taught us this. It does so much more than wah 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 wah. You know, it, it it really you know you can really accentuate bends with the wah. You know, just by starting foot all the way back and then putting the toe all the way down. Yeah, you can really bring out that kind of thing. It becomes more vocal. It becomes more like singy than it does just kind of like, you know, going... You know, that kind of thing. Um, you know, it just becomes more vocal. And uh, and again, not using the full sweep, just not going all the way forward. And not going all the way back. Just manipulating that sweep in a, in a different way, not just kind of like going, kind of like, you know, just all the way back, forward, all the way back, forward all the time. Um, like, like you saw, hopefully, in, in the little example I did. 
And uh, yeah, so that's it really. And that's the, that's kind of the key to it. And there is one other little lick that I forgot to teach you. And I'm going to do it now quickly. It won't be a close up, sadly, but uh, hopefully you'll be able to get an idea. Uh, this one, that I taught you, we're going to do it the next octave up. So what we're going to do is we're going to bend up the 17, 18, 19, 20, the 20th fret on the B string a tone. So bend up 20th fret on the B string. And then you go to the 17th fret high E. And then you go to the... So bend up, yeah. Well, hang on a minute. 17, 18, 19, 20. Yeah. 20th fret B string all the way up a tone. And then you go to your 17th fret high E. And then you go to your 20th fret again on the high E. And then you pull off back to the 17th fret high E. So. And then you can do that one with the Ibanez Wah and the DS2, and it just sounds glorious. You can, you can actually jump from octave to octave, so you can go from his low octave to the high octave. So uh, that's another one, hopefully. Uh, that one as well. So that's another one you can do as well. But it's a, it's the same notes as this, just next octave up. Okay, and it's just you know mega intense up there. And this is all in D minor, by the way, everybody. So once you know these shapes in D minor pentatonic scale, you can shift them into different keys. So that shape there in D minor. Uh, between the uh, starting out on the 12th fret on the G and then going to the 10th fret on the B and then bending up the 13th on the B. Um, sorry, not bending up, but you know what I mean. Uh, if you want to go to E minor, you just have to move move it up two frets. So instead of starting on the 12th, you start on the 14th, bend up that tone, and then you go to your 12th fret on the B and then you go to your 15th fret on the B. So you're just going from there. One, two, up two frets. And all of a sudden you're in E minor, okay? So it's quite easy to move. They're very user-friendly, these little kind of like trills. And I say they've been a, they've been a staple of rock guitar forever. So um, they're very, they're very user-friendly. And just say moving them about, you can just kind of like go up two frets or whatever, or just find your pentatonic scale. And you can see where they live inside pentatonic scales. Basically, the notes you play on the, the, the G and the B strings and the B and the high E strings... It's basically there, if you know what I mean. Hope that made sense. Hope this video made sense. I always have the fear that I'm not making any sense and this video is an absolute train wreck. Okay, so that's that. Um, is there anything else I need to talk about? I don't think there is. So that's basically the key to John Fashanti's like crazy wah technique, so to say. If you're not using a DS2, just strum the strings you want, either B, G or B, or B in high E. If you are using a DS2, get the D, G, B, and high E strings in there, just ringing out and just hit the guitar as hard as you can. And like I say, that's where it's, I think it's key to how the plectrum it gives. Uh, if your plectrum gives, you get more noise. If your plectrum is quite stiff, I think you'll struggle. And um, you can't really dig in as heavy because you end up just breaking strings. You really want to be, you know, hitting the guitar really aggressively. It's a very intense technique and it requires you to be quite hands-on with it, full on with it. Okay, so uh, so yeah, that's it. Um, oh yeah, by the way, the two strap idea that you see here over one shoulder and over. Got re I'm getting a really bad back um, from carrying these things around for most of my guitar playing life, and big heavy amps and moving stuff around that I shouldn't be moving around because I'm not strong enough to. But I strained and pulled and broke my back in the process of doing so. I've started to do this, and it feels weird at this point in time. I'm not used to it yet, but the idea is. This strap goes over my le my right shoulder and the strap goes over my left shoulder. Uh, you know, so it's kind of distributing weight a bit better. Oh, and it's not going across this part of my back where I'm having trouble. So my left shoulder blade is giving me a lot of jip recently and like I'm getting a lot of pain like, and it's really hurting to play. And um, it, so the idea of this is kind of like, it might look a bit stupid, but it's it's actually quite comfortable. If you've got a strap that can do this, it's just a fender strap. But it does this. Uh, I'd recommend trying it because it really does distribute the weight. Only issue is it puts the guitar to the right side a bit, and you end up putting more weight on your right leg. So it takes a bit of adjusting to kind of like, kind of like balance yourself out. But you know, um, I'm not sure if it's going to work yet. I'm just trying it out. 
I, uh, I nicked the idea from uh, Walter Trout. He does this. He's got a strap that goes over both shoulders, and it's it's interesting. I don't know. I don't know if it's going to work yet, but I did I did a gig the other night with it, and it was just uh, my back didn't hurt afterwards. So I don't know if it's working or uh, I don't know. I will keep you informed on that. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video on this wah technique, everybody. It's it's a really cool technique. It, it adds a lot of intensity to your guitar solos because you can just be kind of going. <laughs> You know, it, all of a sudden it's like, hey, you know, massive breakout, and it's really cool if you're kind of like doing quiet, you know, quiet to loud. So. solo and I remember seeing the Chili Peppers at Don Valley Stadium uh, in 2006 they did this outro jam that lasted about half an hour it was so long this outro jam went on forever and ever and ever and um, I don't remember what they were playing the last song they played was Give It Away so it had been in A so John would have been down here anyway um, they just went really quiet they were just kind of like They're just so quiet. And you can hear the crowd over the PA. And they were just really quiet. And then you just all of a sudden just went. carried away but I got possessed by John then but uh, yeah and it was just like that and all of a sudden it was so loud and you, you just heard him kick on that wah and it was like literally your face went <laughs> it was wicked and they did it they did it in the intro jam they did it at Hyde Park and it was just like glorious beyond glorious anyway I think I've waffled on enough about um this this technique and other things I have tangented quite a bit but that's okay um, okay, so I do hope you enjoyed this uh, video. I hope it's kind of cleared up some of the John Fashanti technique. This is kind of a how to play like John Fashanti video. So it is in that playlist. Um, and I have spoke about this before, but I thought I'd dedicate a video to it where I, I can go as in depth as I humanly can um, on it. And also show you the wah, show you the technique up close and show you what you're kind of doing. And, um, and, and and some of my other thoughts into it, and also pedal placement. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it's been informative, everybody. I'll see you again on Wednesday for a QA. and a uh, And, as usual, and, uh, yeah. And have a great morning, afternoon, and good evening. And I'll see you again then. Goodbye now. Thank you very much for watching. Hope it's been informative. Let's do more crazy wild stuff. <laughs>
Yeah, thank you very much for watching.